This is a printer switch for controlling the ceiling fan right there. There's a knob for controlling the fan speed and there's supposed to be another knob for controlling the brightness of the lights except that's broken. So this whole thing is broken and I need to replace it. But instead of replacing it with the same switch which costs $25 at Home Depot, I am going to switch it to this single pole switch, which costs 70 cents. And I'll show you how to do that. I took the switch plate off and now I am going to unscrew and take the switch out. So let's go over what all these wires are. You have wires supplying power entering this junction box from the lower left and wires that are leaving through the lower right to feed power to some other part of the house like an outlet. The wires leaving through the top right are powering the fan and the lights on the fan. All the neutral wires, which are the white wires, need to be connected together. That's already been done, so you don't have to do anything about those. All the hot wires, which include the red and the black wires, need to be connected to the light switch. I'm going to connect the two hot wires color-coded black and red, bringing power into this light switch box and the wires continuing the power to some other part of the house to the bottom of the switch. A lot of light switch boxes will not have this second set of wires going to some other part of the house and they might have just a single hot black wire coming in so you would have just one black wire to connect to the bottom of the light switch. I'm going to connect the hot wires that will be powering the ceiling fan and the lights to the top of the switch. Normally electricians will use the red wire to connect to the ceiling fan lights and the black wire to connect to the fan. For a light switch controlling just a ceiling light or a wall sconce, you would only have to connect just a single black wire to the switch. The plain copper wires should be connected to the green screw on the switch at the top. You can either wrap the wires around the screws and tighten the screws or stick the wires into these holes in the back. Because I've got so many wires, I'm going to create electrical pigtails using 14 gauge copper wires. So here I'm just showing you how to strip the wires using a wire stripper. Because I don't do much wiring, I have a cheap $5 one, but I wouldn't recommend this at all. I'm going to create one pigtail by connecting one wire to all the red and black wires in the box other than the two wires at the top that are wired to the ceiling fan. I'm going to create another pigtail for those.
Now I can connect all the wires to the switch by connecting the black pigtail wire to the bottom hole in the switch and inserting the red pigtail wire, which is a hot wire to the ceiling fan, into the top hole. I connected the ground wire, which already had a pigtail, to the green ground screw. Now I'm going to go switch on the power to this room from the breaker panel in the basement. The lights are working. The fan's working. 